Hi everybody, thanks for coming along to watch my presentation. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy day. I'm Dr Suzanne Hoff. I'm the course lead of the Masters of Speech Pathology at Charles Sturt University in Albury in Australia. Today I'd like to present findings on the multilingual repertoires of a group of Year 1 children that are based in Fiji, which is where I live. Before I commence, I'd like to highlight um, the Fiji community who are so supportive of this research, as well as my funders. What most people think of when they think of Fiji is a bucket list tropical paradise somewhere in the Pacific Ocean. Or maybe you think of Fiji water, an iconic brand from this small island nation. But Fiji is much more than a wonderful holiday destination or a cool refreshing drink on a hot day. Fiji is actually a small Pacific Island nation with a rich multi-ethnic, multicultural and multilingual population. The nation itself contains over 300 islands, um, geographically spread, divided into five regions, North, East, South and West and Central Fiji. Historically, the population was split fairly evenly across urban and rural areas. However, an urban drift has resulted and in recent 2017 census figures, there was a significantly higher number of Fijians now living in urban centres, 56 versus 44%. The largest of these urban centres is Suva, which is the country's capital. It's located on the east of the main island, Viti Lubu, over here. And I'm located over on the west in Nandi. I've been here uh, since 2009. This is now my home and I'm proud to call myself an Australian Fijian. Looking a little bit more closely at Fiji, it has a population of a little less than a million people. Um, it, the government recognises the ethnic population diversity and a new constitution in 2013, though that's not that new anymore, acknowledges four broad ethnic groups. The indigenous Italke, the Indian Fijians with Indian subcontinent ancestry, the peoples of Rotuma, whose island is within Fiji territorial waters, and other immigrant communities, including myself. Economically, Fiji is considered a middle-income nation. However, whilst unemployment rates are relatively low, listed at 4.1% in 2019 by the Asia Development Bank, poverty rates are relatively high, with social welfare limited to the most severe cases um, in the country despite a recorded 28.1% of the population living below the national poverty line. Unfortunately, um, the severe impact of COVID-19 and consequent job losses in the tourism industry has likely increased these numbers. But despite all of this, Fijians are regularly identified as the happiest nation on earth. And it's where I've been lucky enough to call home, as I said, since 2009. We are an incredibly resilient community and we come through many um, natural disasters as well as this latest one with a smile on our face. With ethnic diversity, there's a considerable language variation and language contact environment. There are three institutional languages spoken in Fiji, Standard Fijian, Fiji Hindi and Fiji English. However, there's a myriad of other languages from all over the world here, spoken in smaller numbers. Thinking about standard Fijian, it's sometimes called the Itake language also, or the Bowen Fijian dialect. It's known as the official institutional language, but there are actually over 300 local dialects of Fijian. In, the, in this ex-British colony and um, language contact environment, English has grown considerably over the last 100 plus years. So much so that English is now the language of commerce, education and government, and it's considered the dominant lingua franca of the country. Language change is reportedly happening rapidly in Fiji. And like many other countries in the world, there's concern about the growth of the English language and the consequent potential loss of cultural and linguistic diversity here. However, as in many other countries in the world, especially developing ones, English competence is seen as an essential skill required to do well in school and consequently in the big wide world after school. 
we're lucky that Fijian government education policy has tried to alleviate some of this concern about diversity loss and they've prescribed a transitional bilingual curriculum. There's also a policy of compulsory Indigenous language instruction for all ethnic groups, groups throughout primary school. Now, in urban centres, um, diverse classrooms make it difficult to choose a language other than English as a primary language, in, language of instruction. However, in other areas, in more rural areas, um, this, it's a lot easier, I'm told, to um, implement these policies. The other issue in classrooms uh, is the availability of appropriate teaching resources in languages other than English. Because English has been the dominant language of the classroom, most of classroom resources are in the English language. That is slowly changing and there's some wonderful projects happening locally that are trying to develop um, school books, uh, storybooks in particular in local languages. Just quickly want to mention linguistic multi-competence. Um, so developed by Cook in 1995. Linguistic multi-competence acknowledges that multilingualism is actually a state of mind, not simply a linguistic construct. So linguistic multi-competence can be applied to an individual and their community. A key, a key premise of linguistic multi-competence is the existence of interlanguage, linguistic and cultural groups sharing languages. In a 2018 um, paper, my colleague Sharon McLeod and Sarah McDonough, published in the International Journal of Multilingualism, we reported 267 linguistic profiles of 40 Year 4 students and their conversational partners. In that study, students spoke between one and five languages. Now, these are older children, not in the early childhood um, range. But these children and their caregivers, mothers, fathers, childminders, and their teachers all spoke between one and six languages. On average, the students and the caregivers spoke three languages. That's considerable linguistic diversity. Importantly, amongst the students and conversational partners, 96.6 of that study were multilingual. The most common languages spoken were Fijian and Fiji um, Hindi, um, but also Fiji English. Proficiency in that year four group um, varied across the different languages that were spoken and across the different groups that were involved. And I'll revisit some of that data a little later as we're talking about the Year 1 children. The reason that I wanted to bring up linguistic multicompetence is um, there's a lot to be said about this concept in terms of nation building. And as I said, the attempts by the Fijian government and the Ministry of Education here to maintain this linguistic diversity has been very positive and in engaging people and respecting each other's language diversity. Coming to the main aim of my study, this study reports on a younger age group that I mentioned, um, but they, they are from the same school. So I'm going to present for one group of Fijian early childhood students. Uh, they were actually within three months of starting their first grade school journey. Our results actually reveal some new knowledge about these children's language use and proficiency. How did we do the study? I was lucky enough to be granted permission by the Ministry of Education in Fiji to conduct the study in a school in Western Fiji, not far from my home. 35 children from a Year 1 class were included in the study. Uh, information on language use and proficiency was collected via a caregiver survey. The, the actual survey was informed by previous research exploring Fijian children's linguistic profiles, which was done by Shamim and also um, Nuclear Intent and White and by international research and by McLeod, McCormick, Rand and Ralston in Australia. All the questionnaires were pilot tested and found to have good face validity. Um, importantly, we offered all the questionnaires in standard Fijian, in Hindi and in English. However, um, caregivers chose to only complete the English versions. So the caregivers completed the paper-based questionnaire once they'd um, returned their study consent form. They were um, also offered appointment times with um, the primary researcher, me, and or a research assistant who was fluent in their home language if they wanted to discuss the questionnaire, if they had questions about any of the questions, then they could do it with um, either of us. When we got a completed uh, questionnaire survey, 
We reviewed it and if we identified any ambiguous or incomplete responses then we attempted to contact the caregiver and to clarify those responses where we could. So we ended up, as I said, with 35 um, caregivers providing information on 35 Year 1 students. The Year 1 children were predominantly Italke Fijian, Indigenous Fijian, and they were predominantly male. The group ranged in age from 5 years and 3 months to 7 years and 3 months, to the top end of our early childhood scale. There were no caregiver reported concerns about the child's communication development in the mother tongue language, their first language, their main language. Although the school was considered a multiracial school, um, caregivers reported that most children in the group were actually Italke Fijian and they spoke Fijian, either the standard bound variety or a dialect thereof. As you can see from the number of languages spoken, all but three of the children, or 91.4%, were multilingual on school entry. So before they even start school, these are clever kids with really clever tongues and brains. One interesting point of difference between these multilingual children was their choice of language with their parents. Um, that's not on this graph here, but just to let you know a little bit, the Fijian speaking children tended to speak Fijian with both their mum and their dad. Um, some Fiji Hindi dominant and English dominant speaking children in their families, they chose to mix it up. So for example, um, one English dominant speaking child spoke Fiji Hindi with their dad and English with their mum. And similarly, two Fiji Hindi dominant children spoke Fiji Hindi with their dad, but switched to English with their mum. We didn't see those same patterns for the um, Italke Fijian children. Um, interestingly also for um, households who had caregivers or nannies, those same sort of patterns were seen for the nannies. So uh, Italke Fijian families tended to have nannies who spoke a Fijian dialect. Um, English speaking or Fiji Hindi speaking households often had a um, caregiver who spoke English. All right. The reason I bring that up is because I think that these parent and um, other caregiver specific patterns potentially have an impact on the um, level of exposure to each language that these children are receiving prior to coming to school. And that likely has had an impact on the proficiency results, which I'll put, um, report to you next. Where a column and language contain the same language, this represents language proficiency in the student's main language, all right, their mother tongue. We can see here that for all mother tongues except Fijian dialect, proficiency is almost 100% by school. Now remember, this is main language proficiency and these children are starting school between the ages of five and six years of age. So we would expect that these children are pretty good communicators in their first language. So why are the Fijian dialect speakers not coming to school as proficient as children in their first language from the other um, groups? Now, unfortunately, it, I can't explain that number. Um, some of the possible explanations are that Fijian dialect speaking caregivers may be a bit harder in the estimations um, for proficiency. Uh, one other potential explanation is that they may, may be exposed to more additional languages than other children from different language groups uh, because there are so many dialects in Fiji. As I mentioned, there are over 300. So um, it could also be a consequence of the small um, N value, the small number of participants uh, that we had for the Fijian dialect group. Either way, um, we really need to look a lot more closely at these Fijian dialect speakers and the proficiency they have in their main language before they come to school because language and competency and particular language competency in your first language is such an important, important precursor to academic um, success. Now let's take a look at how students speak each other's languages. And it's quite clear that if standard Fijian and Fijian dialect speakers know Fiji Hindi, as was suggested by the multilingual numbers of children speaking between one and five languages and average three, they only know those other languages with very low proficiency. So as you can see, we've got zeros here for speaking somewhat well or very well for both the standard Fijian and Fijian dialect speakers and also the Fiji Hindi speakers. So um, what is interesting though is that the Fiji English speakers, who some people may have assumed um, would 
be predominantly monolingual, they actually seem to be learning the languages of all their conversational partners with somewhat better proficiency. And then, again, there were only a small number of children within this group, so we can't make any big um, picture decisions about their multilingualism proficiency, um, but it's promising. Fijian dialect speakers, you know, come into school with relatively high proficiency in standard Fijian, which is um, something that I would expect, you know, because standard Fijian speakers um, also have some proficiency in Fijian dialect. So we're seeing a lot of um, mixing of these dialects in the community. It's likely, as I said, that um, some of that is due to parental influences. Many uh, Talke Indigenous Fijian parents speak a Fijian dialect in addition to standard Fijian in the home. Um, and some, well, not some, all Fijians are actually pretty social. So quite frequently there'll be relatives coming and going to the household um, from different parts of the country where a different dialect might be spoken. If we look at English language proficiency in a little bit more detail, um, because this is the language children are required to use at school, and English language proficiency ultimately determines academic success in Fiji, we see a, a, another interesting picture emerge. Now, as you can see, while standard Fiji and, and Fiji Hindi speaking students come into year one with relatively good um, first language competency, um, they also come in with relatively equal English proficiency as reported by caregivers. Okay, important to remember this caregiver report. Fijian dialect speakers, on the other hand, come into school with significantly less English proficiency than their peers. Now, this is a bit of a concern. These children are entering year one classrooms with what appears to be some disadvantage compared to their standard Fijian and Fiji Hindi or Fiji English speaking peers. Now, as an aside, I mentioned earlier that if a child's Fijian speaker of any dialect, that Fiji education policy is that that child should be taught in standard Fijian. And what I didn't say is that the standard Fijian dialect is actually an Eastern Fijian dialect. So it's significantly different to the dialects these children speak in the Western region of the main island. So consequently, even if the classroom was taught in standard Fijian and these children didn't have to rely on English, these children could potentially have a lot of difficulty following the lesson. They're essentially being immersed in a new language, standard Fijian, even though it might be closely related to their dialect. As it was in the classroom that I observed, um, most of the language instruction was um, actually in English. So this language difference between peers, you know, potentially has a huge impact on comparative academic progress. If they're starting behind their peers, they have a long way to catch up. But uh, let me share some of that data that I mentioned earlier from the year four group in the same school. Incredibly, the Fiji dialect speaking children in this year four group were holding ground with their standard Fijian and Fiji Hindi, um, Fiji Hindi speaking peers. Now, this isn't a longitudinal study. These are two separately different groups of children in year one and year four. So I can't say that the year one children are necessarily going to catch up um, like it looks like these year four kids have. Um, what I can suggest is that there's hope that these multilingual children and the teaching that they're receiving is actually helping them to succeed in school. So there's a positive picture that comes out of there potentially. But we really do need a longitudinal study that follows these younger kids through their educational journey to see if um, these linguistic differences that I've noted actually are a barrier, and particularly a barrier to literacy because we know that literacy skills rely on sound um, oral language skills. And if these dialect speaking kids are coming in, spending all their energy on just learning oral language of um, English, then potentially they're missing out on some of that important core literacy instruction that happens between year one and four. And these are really important questions that need answering. And hopefully at some point um, a funder comes along and helps to fund this research so that we can learn a bit more about how Fijian children actually progress through school. So I like to think that was a good news story. Um, however, as a speech language pathologist, 
the trading, trained English language teacher, I need to look at the flip side of those numbers as well. So on this slide, I have the percentage of students who do not speak their main language or English, if it is an additional language, very well or somewhat well as reported by caregivers. Let's look at the main language first. Fiji, Hindi and English speaking children are reportedly fairly proficient in their main language by the time they reach school. Of concern are the 6.2% standard Fijian and 25% dialect speakers who come to school without a solid foundation in their first language. The educators listening would know that a child's first language competence is critical to development of future academic skills in that language or any additional language. These children are then immersed in an English language learning environment and we've already seen that Fiji dialect speakers come into year one with far less English language proficiency. So that's a double whammy, lower first language proficiency and lower English language proficiency. These are a group of kids who really do need some specialist support. I'm wondering how these numbers that we're seeing influence their learning experience at school. I'm also wondering how this English language immersion influences future main language development. Are these things happening you know, symbiotically or is there some language loss happening down the track? Unfortunately, as I said, this data is not longitudinal. I can't really say whether the 6.2% and the 25% continue to develop their main language beyond year one and to what degree. Um, however, as we can see, the year four data may offer some clues. And what we see here is that the standard Fijian kids caregivers, they're no longer concerned or are certainly not super concerned anymore about main language development. But there is still a large number of caregivers of Fijian dialect speaking children, 16.6%, who are still reporting that their child can only speak their main language not very well or not at all. And that's quite a lot. So... Some of this may be due to responder error or interpreting the question differently than it was intended. But I'm, you know, and as I mentioned, small numbers, but the 16.6% still needs a closer look. It may be that there is some language loss happening in this older Fijian dialect um, group, um, that they're giving up high competence in their dialect in preference for learning more in the languages of the school environment, which is standard Fijian and English. There's also still a significant number of students who are not at least somewhat proficient in English. Um, and so we can see those numbers in the last column. How is that you know, influencing their academic performance? And what level of support are they getting in year four to try and help them get through uh, the next um, you know, eight to nine years of their schooling that might remain? So that was, were the results for these year one kids. Um, I think the results pretty clearly show that these young Fijians know what they need to speak in different ways with different people. They're definitely multilingual. They may speak to their teacher in um, a type of standard book English. They might speak to their mum in the Ndronga Fijian dialect, their dad in, the Fiji, in Fiji Hindi and their friends. They might use a mix of all of those languages depending on their proficiency. These kids really can do clever key things with their brains and with their tongues when they talk. I think it's exciting to see this linguistic diversity from such a young age. Um, Fijians understand the importance of family and community and have a really deep connection to language and culture and country. Parents here understand that promoting the many languages and dialects in Fiji is important for their children's connections to their friends and relatives, whether they're near or far. And they allow exploration and expression of this linguistic diversity in their community, which is important for development of their child's growing self-identity and for nation building. Valuing each and every language in this diverse language context is encouraged at a national level down, and we're seeing that in individual households. Now, with any study, there are limitations, and this one's no different. I've mentioned some of it. Um, for generalizability, it would have been better to have a larger random sample, obviously. And my data was also possibly influenced by the caregiver's own knowledge of Fijian dialects and their language skills in each of those languages sampled. Whilst the use of the term standard Fijian is well known to linguists and educators in Fiji, caregivers may not have thought about whether the dialect they speak is standard or not before this survey. 
In addition, the actual differences between standard Fijian and other dialects might not be well understood by the general public. So something like that, even though we did try to, um, to you know, check on any ambiguity in our caregiver responses, may still have creeped into the results. Now, finally, how well can caregivers classify proficiency if they're not proficient in a language themselves or conversely, conversely if they're highly proficient is um, something that we need to ask. You know, a caregiver with no proficiency in Fiji Hindi may think their child's a genius if they can speak a few words or phrases of Fiji Hindi to the grocer at the local market. And they consequently may have marked their child as somewhat or very proficient in Fiji Hindi. Alternatively, a caregiver who is a highly proficient speaker of English may have marked their own child's English proficiency as not very good if they've set higher standards. Uh, as I mentioned, the, um, the sample was uneven. We didn't have equal numbers across our different language groups, and that's something that needs to be fixed in a future study. So summing up, uh, I think we can say that multilingualism and by definition linguistic multi-competence is a defining feature of this year one community. The children did speak on average three languages, ranging between one and five languages. And we also know that the Fijian children usually followed their parents' language use patterns. Um, we note concerns for Fiji dialect speakers whose low rates of main, lang main language proficiency and low levels of English language proficiency on entering school compared to peers potentially influences their academic progression. However, as I noted, the year four data didn't support that. So we really do need that longitudinal study to find out what's happening for these kids. Certainly, with such diversity in a small community, it's not appropriate for policy developers to assume Fijians have similar linguistic profiles because of their age, gender or ethnicity. Um, educators really do need to look at the individual and to adapt their teaching methods for a particular child's um, competency in any given language. Future public policy and research agendas in early childhood education and development fields within Fiji need to support, explore and explain the language diversity that's present in these children further. We really need to promote multilingual development of all Fiji citizens because it's critical, as I said, for ensuring Fiji is placed well in a competitive, globalised world, but also that a strong, inclusive society continues to grow within Fiji. For the educators out there who find a Fijian child in their classroom outside of Fiji, um, please remember that children from diverse cultural and linguistic backgrounds need to have their languages valued and supported in positive and enriching experiences in early childhood education. Early childhood educators need to support development of all languages in a child's repertoire and build a school community that accepts linguistic diversity. Celebrating the linguistic diversity of young Fijians entering school and adequately supporting first language learning in every early childhood classroom will be critical to ensuring children from different first language backgrounds have a level playing field and equal opportunities as they move through the Fiji education system. Some of the literature that I've um, used to support this presentation. Finally, thanks everybody um, for coming along and for listening. If you do have any questions about my presentation, please don't hesitate to contact me on the email there. I um, certainly love to talk to you about Fijian children's linguistic multi-competence.